Christ I will love and serve him my king here am I send me here am I send me as the Lord wants somebody Send me, send me, Lord. Send me, send me, Lord. As the Lord wants somebody, here am I, here am I. Send me, send me, Lord. Send me, Lord, send me. Here am I, here am I, send me. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When the Savior calls, I will answer. I'll be somewhere working for my Lord. I'll be somewhere. I'll be somewhere. I'll be somewhere. I'll be somewhere. Working for my Lord. I will answer. I'll be somewhere. For my Lord. I'll be somewhere. I'll be somewhere. I'll be somewhere working for my Lord. Yes, for my Lord. I'll be somewhere. I'll be somewhere. I'll be somewhere. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. Be ye steadfast and movable, abounding, and your labor will never be in vain, won't be in vain. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, abounding. And your labor will never be in vain, won't be in vain. Abounding in the work of the Lord. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, abounding. And your labor will never be in vain, won't be in vain. In the work of the Lord, abounding, and your labor will never be in vain. Go to the mountain, go to the valley, go preach the gospel, Jesus is coming go to the mountain go to the valley go preach the gospel jesus is coming again go to the mountain go to the valley go preach
preach the gospel, Jesus is coming. Go to the mountain, go to the valley, go preach the gospel, Jesus is coming again. Go to the mountain, go to the valley, go preach the gospel, Jesus is coming, go to the mountain, go to the valley, go preach the gospel, Jesus is coming again. Go and tell the story, tell it far and wide, how the Lord of glory met thee on the way. Spirit from the stains of sin, straightway he the fountain from the Lord received. Go and tell the story, tell it far and near. For the sinner died, and the soul that hears it, and in faith believes. Straightway he the cleansing from the Lord receive. And the soul that hears it and in faith believes. Straightway he the cleansing from the Lord receive. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Lift up Jesus, he is King of kings. Lift up Jesus, he is Lord of lords. Lift up Jesus, he is King of kings, King of kings, and Lord of lords, we will lift him high. He is King of kings, he is Lord of lords, lift up Jesus, he is King of kings, King of kings and Lord of lords, let us lift him high. He is King of kings. He is Lord of lords. He is King of kings, King of kings and Lord of lords. Lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher, lift him up for the world to see. For he says, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto him. Lift Jesus higher. Lift him up for the world to see. Amen. We welcome all of us to the Bible study of today in Jesus' mighty name. Our audience this evening, 
comprised brethren from Bagada, Ketu, and Shomulu. As usual, we always have new people who desire more God in their life, and they're here this evening to study the Bible with us for the first time. Therefore, if today is your first time of coming to the Bible study, our pastor, the general superintendent of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry, is glad you came. And the entire church have great pleasure in your attendance. We pray that the teaching of this evening will be remarkable in your life in Jesus' name. Wherever you may be seated, kindly rise for recognition and the warm greetings of the entire church. Wherever you are seated, you are in the middle of the people that love you. Rise victoriously. Amen. On behalf of our general superintendent, you are welcome in Jesus' name. Our ushers are very close to you and will give you a slip of paper. Kindly collect same and supply the required information correctly, legibly, and fully. You may be seated to fill in the sleep properly. We rise now as we sing from our gospel hymns and song, number 56. I love, I love my master. I will not go out free. For he is my redeemer. He paid the price for me. I will not leave his service. It is so sweet and blessed. And in the weariest moments, he gives the truest rest. My master shed his life blood my visa life to win and save me from the bondage of tyrant self and sin he chose me for his service and gave me power to choose that blessed perfect freedom which I shall never lose I will not have my service is only it must be it's only who so loved me and gave himself for me, rejoicing and adoring. Henceforth, my song shall be, I love, I love my master, I will not go out free.
Today we are going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The second book of Moses, called Exodus. Chapter 22. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox, and four sheep for a sheep. If a thief be found breaking up, and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him, for he should make full restitution. If he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be ox, or ass, or sheep, he shall restore double. If a man shall cause a field or vineyard to be eaten, and shall put in his beast, and shall feed in another man's field, of the best of his own field, and of the best of his own vineyard, shall he make restitution. If fire break out, and catch in thorns, so that the stacks of corn, or the standing corn, or the field be consumed therewith, he that kindled the fire shall surely make restitution. If a man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep, and it be stolen out of the man's house, if the thief be found, let him pay double. If the thief be not found, then the master of the house shall be brought unto the judges to see whether he have put his hand unto his neighbor's goods. For all manner of trespass, whether it be for ox, for ass, for sheep, for raiment, or for any manner of lost thing which another challengeth to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor. If a man deliver unto his neighbor an ass, or an ox, or a sheep, or any beast to keep, and it die, or be hurt, or driven away, no man seeing it, then shall an oath of the Lord be between them both, that he hath not put his hand unto his neighbor's goods, and the owner of it shall accept thereof, and he shall not make it good. And if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. If it be torn in pieces, then let him bring it for witness, and he shall not make good that which was torn. And if a man borrow aught of his neighbor, and it be hurt or die, the owner thereof being not with it, he shall surely make it good. But if the owner thereof be with it, he shall not make it good. If it be an hired thing, it came for his hire. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed, and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. If her father utterly refuse to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. He that sacrificeth unto any god, save unto the Lord only, he shall be utterly destroyed. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If thou afflict them in any wise, and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry. And my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword. And your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. 
If thou lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him as an usurer, neither shalt thou lay upon him usury. If thou at all take thy neighbor's raiment to pledge, thou shalt deliver it unto him by that the sun goeth down, for that is his covering only. It is his raiment for his skin, wherein shall he sleep. And it shall come to pass, when he crieth unto me, that I will hear, for I am gracious. Thou shalt not revile the gods, nor curse the ruler of thy people. Thou shalt not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits and of thy liquors, the firstborn of thy sons shalt thou give unto me. Likewise shalt thou do with thine oxen and with thy sheep. Seven days it shall be with his dam, on the eighth day thou shalt give it me. And ye shall be holy men unto me. Neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of beasts in the field. Ye shall cast it to the dogs. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim, Pray for grace that you will do as you are blunt in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. We we'll remain standing as we give our tithe and offering. The scripture says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, and shattering together and running over, shall make give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all, it shall be measured to you again. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for how you have blessed us with these substances. As we give them to you, bless us in return in Jesus' name. And grant us the grace to have implicit faith in the word of our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. We thank you because you have answered. In Jesus' powerful name, we have prayed. When I come for those who are hurting, 
where I have a fortune we are lost sometimes it was always easy bearing Calvary's cross we've been recruited by those who don't know him and mocked by those who don't believe still I love standing up for my Jesus cause of all that he's done for me that's why I am not ashamed of the gospel the gospel of Jesus Christ no I am not afraid to be counted I need to be my Lord nothing is to be only one thing to be in what I love what I rise oh no I am not ashamed of the gospel I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for every moment he stands have had mercy for all the love he's shown all my life a simple thing doesn't say how I'm feeling I've got tears in my eyes so as for me I'm gonna keep, keep on believing in the one who's been so faithful to me I'm not out to please the whole world around me. I've got my mind on eternity. I'll bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world.
evangelism takes place almost everywhere. Almost all people who attach themselves to Christianity, they do a form of evangelism, one kind or the other. But there is on Christ-like evangelism. Even among us here, there are people that do on Christ-like evangelism. Evangelism not exactly like Christ's evangelism. I evangelize, that's not enough. What kind of evangelism? Is it the kind Jesus practiced? Your evangelism to be rewarded, your evangelism to be recognized from heaven must be Christ-like. If the evangelism is not Christ-like, it has no recognition in heaven. It's a waste of time, a waste of energy, a waste of resources, a waste of all that you could have invested in other things. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, to make one follower, to make one convert, to make one member of your group. And when he is made, ye make him to fold the child of hell than yourselves. They brought people in. They were very zealous, those Pharisees, those religious people. They compass sea and land. They will take the boat. They will go by road. They will sweat at it. And they're trying to bring in people who are not of their fault before. They don't talk about repentance because they themselves don't know about repentance. They don't talk about confessing their sins and forsaking their sins and believing in the Lord. And when those proselytes and converts and members and new people are made, they learn the way of the Pharisees and those people become to fold children of hell than themselves. What do they tell them? What do they emphasize? What do they show them they ought to do? When those Pharisees went out to evangelize at the called age, they made the people to change on the outside. Don't wear this, don't wear that. Put on this, don't put on that. Appear like this, there's no change of heart. There's no change in their spirit. There's no cleansing in their hearts. The corruption that was there before is still there. They only make them to change outwardly. And once that is done, you are a convert now, you are a believer now, you are a member of our church now, and they present them for water baptism. Deception. Those people know nothing about repentance. They know nothing about regeneration. They know nothing about a change of path. Only this outward change, which is religion. You start from within. If I have repented, and I know that even secret sin is damnable in the sight of God, I don't want to practice anything. I'm sincere to God. I'm sincere to myself. But the one that's only sincere to the soul winner, and the one that is only looking at the soul winner, I'm going to copy the soul winner. I'm going to act like the soul winner. And there is no change of heart. It's all deception. I pray evangelism will not be like that. Your evangelism will not be like that. You tell people to repent. In the spirit of the Lord, in faithfulness of the word of God, you will tell them and show them from scripture that they ought to repent. And the Lord will honor his word in your mouth. They will repent. They will turn. And as they turn, the Lord will forgive them. The Lord will cleanse them. 
the Lord will change their lives. And that change will bring eternal life unto them in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. We need to pray tonight. And we need to pray that you will carry out a Christ-like evangelism from this moment and forth. Back, we are back to the scripture. The scriptural evangelism, like that of Christ, like that of Apostle Paul and others who have gone before us. Apostle Paul says that my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of mass wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. If Paul will say, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of mass wisdom, we need to pray tonight that your evangelism and so many outreaches will not be with the enticing word of men's wisdom as from tonight. Pray. Talk to the Lord in prayer that your evangelism will be in demonstration of the Spirit and of uh, the transforming power of the Almighty God, transforming sinners to saints, transforming backsliders back to the faith. Pray that Christ will bring unto you the Christ-like methods and strategies of proclaiming the gospel to sinners. That as from tonight, that method will be your model of soul winning in evangelism. Jesus began his ministry by saying, A time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye. That was the emphasis. Repent ye and believe the gospel. We need to pray that the Lord will help us to emphasize this in our evangelism. Calling the sinners to repentance. Not only repenting, they need to believe the gospel. Jesus at the end of his ministry also said that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among God nations. And as we are reaching out to the nations, we need to pray that the Lord will help you to be obedient to this command, to this charge of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the Lord will renew this charge in the heart of every member of the church and from tonight. We go back to the scripture, evangelism. We shall not turn to another on Christ-like gospel proclamation in evangelism. Let us pray. As we see in the early church, they stood on Christ-like preaching in evangelism. Peter cried to his audience on the day of Pentecost, Repent ye therefore, and be comforted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and they shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, not only preach unto them, but to bless you in turning away every one of you. We are going to pray that as we go forth again, with this church, sinners shall be turned to Christ through genuine repentance and faith in Jesus. The Lord answers your prayers. Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for this church that you have given unto us as we go forth in your name. I'm preaching this scriptural gospel again, evangelizing the souls. They will be, they will, they will, they will be transformed and turned unto thee. And souls will be won into the kingdom of God through the power of God in me, in Jesus' name. We bless your name, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for the faithfulness of your children. 
here and everywhere eager to study eager to learn eager to obey we're praying lord your reward the faithfulness of your people in jesus name we're asking lord that tonight you open the pages of the scriptures and give us vision revelation insight understanding and the willingness to be obedient to your word in jesus name everyone fathers and mothers brothers and sisters children and young people everyone listening to your word concentrate in on what christ the savior the lord has to say to each one and we pray lord we'll so honor you and listen to you and respond to you so that eternal life will be ours for everyone in jesus name help us lord to take seriously the revelation you are giving us so that we'll not gamble with our lives will not gamble with eternity and will not gamble with the grace that you have provided for everyone in jesus name thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray and the church of god said amen thank you very much you can sit down in galatians chapter 1 verse 17 neither went i up to jerusalem to them which were apostles before me but i went into arabia and returned again to damascus but it is says then after three years i went up to jerusalem to see peter and abode with him 15 days verse 19 but other of the apostles saw so I none, save James, except James, the Lord's brother. Verse 20 tells us, Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Verse 21, afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and then in verse 22, and was unknown by faith unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. 23 then tells us, but they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed. Verse 24, and they glorified god in me and they glorified god in me his life had turned around and the people saw that and the people could recognize the change the transformation and the supernatural hand of god upon his life and they glorified god in me he had been persecuting now he's preaching that same gospel that he persecuted before and they glorified god in me his life was lived in the dungeon of sinfulness but now the power of god and the strength of the lord and the salvation of god at come to him if any man if any boy if any girl if any brother if any sister if anyone in any church if anyone in any age be in christ is a new creature old things have passed away and the old lifestyle is gone and behold all things have become new and the people that saw him they knew the old life they saw the new life and they glorified God in me. He had manifested zeal and earnestness in the persecution of the church, in the persecution of men and women. He had manifested zeal and the earnestness in working for the devil. Now he is converted and he brought all his skill, all his time and every understanding he had. He brought everything now to the preaching 
of the gospel he had done much evil and if he could in the new life in the converted life in the regenerated life it would reverse every evil sin he had done if he could it will get to all the places he had forced people to blaspheme he'll get there he'll get to the kings he'll get to the leaders he'll get to the Israelites he'll get to the Jews he'll get to the Gentiles and he will reverse all the evil he had done he had so much love for God and so much excitement that God had given him another chance and then he so lived that life and he so practiced his faith that the people that saw him and the people that saw his actions now and the people that saw his activities now and the people that saw the manifestation of practical purposeful righteousness now knowing he was now walking and serving the lord in view of eternity those people they glorified god in him and he tells us that all this happened to him so that for you and for me who are living in this generation he'll be a pattern that our lives too will so change our lives too will so be transformed our lives too will so experience the grace of god that the people who knew us before in our immediate family the people who knew us before in our places of work the people who knew us before in our schools in our colleges the people and the teenagers who were our peers and they knew us before and now they know that salvation has come regeneration has come a new life had come they will look at us and see us and glorify god in us the people who had been preaching to us before and we persecuted them and we neglected them and we rubbish all their message now conversion has come a new life has come and those people that were preaching to us before they see the light they see the glory they see the manifestation of the salvation of the lord and they say thank god we didn't give up on him thank god we didn't give up on her and they glorified god in me that's what we're looking at tonight the transformation of a great persecutor to a gracious preacher persecutor preacher great persecutor became a gracious preacher the transformation the change the supernatural turnaround of a great persecutor to a gracious preacher there are three things we're looking at as we look at these uh, verses today number one the testimony of a truly converted soul a truly converted soul not just a bench woman not just somebody coming to church not just somebody hearing the word and not praying about you not doing anything about you the people that come and they give their lives to the lord they have conviction and then they go to pray and there is a great manifestation of the grace of god in their lives their testimony and your testimony if you are born again whether you're a teenager you're a boy you're a girl you're a man you're a woman when somebody gets converted anyone anytime anywhere there is a testimony the testimony of a truly converted so number two is the truthfulness of a trustable cleansed saints when we come to the lord he cleanses us he washes us it says so what some of you but now ye are washed but now ye are sanctified but now ye, you are converted and because you are converted now you're truthful you are trustable and your words are trustworthy you are cleansed by the blood of the lamb the truthfulness of a trustable cleansing number three is the transformation of a teaching christ-centered servant he became not only saved called to salvation not only sanctified called to sanctification he became a servant of God. We are saved to serve. Have you started serving? Are you serving the Lord in love with all your heart, 
with all your soul, with all your mind? Are you bringing all your skill, all your energy without any reservation and without any rival? Are you bringing all your skill and all your strength, everything you've got, all your talent? Are you bringing that to serve the Lord? If you are born again, if you are converted, if you are saved, if your life has been grieved by the grace of God and you are turned around, one purpose and one pursuit and one thing in which you persevere the service of the Lord for the glory of God, for the conversion of souls that you understand, I am saved to serve and that day is lost when you do not do something that promotes the service of the lord that promotes people from sin to sin that hour that moment that day is lost that you don't bring out the purpose of your salvation that you are saved to serve and so Paul the Apostle, you understood, he received grace that he might reveal that grace to other people. He came into the kingdom that he, by his endeavor and by his work, may bring other people into the kingdom, sage to serve. That appeared to be his motto, and he saw that everywhere. He saw it on the street. I'm saved to serve. He saw it in the community. I'm saved to serve. He saw it in the prison. I am saved to serve. He saw it everywhere he went, and that was the motor that drove him, that made him to understand, because I am saved to serve every opportunity I'm going to make use of, and I will not allow any opportunity to pass without the service of God, the transformation of a teaching Christ-centered servant. Let's look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the testimony of a truly converted soul. Truly, genuinely, veritably converted unto the Lord. It tells us in Galatians chapter 1, verse 17, Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then in verse 18, it says, Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. Verse 19 says, It says, But other of the apostles saw I none save except James, the Lord's brother. The testimony, he was giving testimony of what happened when he knew the Lord. After he knew the Lord, and years after he came. to the Lord, the testimony of a truly converted and truly saved soul. Three things and number one, the early period of his conversion and conviction. The early period, if you are truly saved, if you are genuinely saved, you remember the good old days, the first day when you came to know the Lord, the joy and the peace and the new purpose and the new drive of your life and the new commitment of your life and the new love and the fellowship we had at that time time you have the testimony on the early period of your conversion and conviction the question is as you remember as you recall is it still like that today do you still have the same joy and the same
same peace and the same purpose and the same drive that you had at that time that should be the testimony for Paul the Apostle the early conversion life was not anything different from the present day that now he was giving the testimony number two the evident purpose of connection and consultation he went to see Peter why he went to see James the brother of uh, Jesus of the Lord in the flesh why the purpose the evident purpose of connection and consultation after you are born again you don't stay as an isolated island you connect with other believers you connect with a bible believing church what's the purpose why are you connected to a bible believing church why are you connected to the bible study why are you connected to the people of god who love the bible know the bible and follow the bible there must be an evident purpose in your life why that connection consultation is there number three the established pillars in the church of christ established pillars that he consulted the people he met with and their pillars in the church there was the time they were babes and babes are not strong babes are not solid but they continue in the lord and it is that continuity in the lord continuity in the word of god continuity in prayer continuity in facing every challenge that came to them as believers that made them stronger and stronger and stronger and eventually they became pillars and they could be consulted and people could go to them because they are solid steadfast unshakable pillars in the church of christ let's look at number one the early period of his conversion and conviction we're coming to acts of the apostles chapter 9 and we're reading from verse 20 and straight to Way he preached Christ in the synagogues that he in the Son of God. That's exactly the idea. That's exactly the notion. That's exactly the principle. That's exactly the precept. That's exactly the word he had been fighting. But now, instead of fighting that, he became born again. The Lord Jesus has spoken unto him on the way to Damascus. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? What thou, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, oh, that persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. He said, Lord, what must I do now? Go to Damascus. It shall be told thee what thou shalt do. And it was there three days and three nights. Just pray. unto the Lord and then and then asked him to him uh, he had been converted said brother Saul the Lord who appeared to you on the way to Damascus has sent me that your eyes will be opened uh, that you'll be baptized in water and also filled with the Holy Ghost and that happened and because of that when he saw that Christ the son of god christ the very savior of the world he began to preach and straightway he preached that christ 
is the son of God in the synagogue. And we're told him. Verse 21, in verse 21, he tells us about this himself. and the activity that went on and the program and the pro project that went on as he was preaching the gospel and then persecution arose that persecution when it arose the people in Damascus they knew that this persecution was because of this new life and now he tells us in verse 21 acts of the apostles chapter 9 verse 21 but all that had him they were Amazed at the conversion, amazed at the turning around, amazed at the grace of God that came to his life now. Now, all that hurt him, young and old, all that hurt him. the believers and the unbelievers all that had him were amazed and said it's not this he saw that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither. For that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest. Then in verse 22, it tells us, and Saul increased the more. strength as I said when you are converted the new babe in Christ and then he was praying he was studying the scriptures he was looking at everything he had needs how foolish he was he thought to himself that he could find an obvious truth redeemer and the savior and because of that he gave himself to prayer and we're told he increased the more in strength he was strong when the lord spoke to him he was strong when he became converted he was strong when he got saved but now day by day and week after week all the time he spent In Damascus there, he was getting stronger and he compounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus proving that this is very Christ no shadow of doubt in his mind no shadow of doubt in his presentation he was telling them 
this is the very Christ. And then in verse 23, we're told, and after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. He was so effective. The presentation of the word, the pursuance of the salvation of other people and the commitment in which he devoted himself day and night and every day with the new zeal, with the new love, and with the new commitment, the way he did it, he said, if this man continue like this, he'll turn the world upside down. True, true. Because when you come later, they said, the men that have turned the world upside down are come thither also. So the Jews took counsel to kill him. Then we were told in verse 24, it says, and they're laying in which was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Even though the persecution arose to that level, he wasn't afraid. But look at what the brethren did in verse 25. In verse 25, and then the disciples took him by night and they let him down by the wall in a basket. That was the beginning because of his conviction, because of his conversion, the early period of his coming to the Lord. I'm asking you the question, do you, can you refer to such early period? In your Christian life, it change, it transform. mission so dramatic that your friends and your neighbors and everyone knew about that kind of conversion did you ever have conviction that drove you to your knees that made you to say oh lord you are a sinner and you needed to be saved did that change happen the that transformation happen was that salvation given to you and can you testify of that great change in the early part of your Christian life and now as that change continued are you strengthened are you moving on are you growing in that conviction? Are you growing in that conversion experience? Let's look at number two there. Number two is the evident purpose of connection and consultation he said he connected with peter he connected with james eventually why did you do that look at galatians chapter 2 and we're looking at verse 2 galatians chapter 2 reading from verse 2 and i went up by
revelation. I went up by revelation. Now Paul the apostle in his life, after he became converted, he will go anywhere, everywhere by revelation. Because in the past, I feel like, no, you won't do that, do that again. I think that No, not by personal thought. You wouldn't do that again. The people want me to know, not by the decision of the people. Difficulties are there, dangers are there. I cannot go. No, no his life was not a kind of rotating around. what people wanted, what people did not want, by revelation. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. He said, the reason I did this is to tell them, Look at what I'm preaching. I'm preaching repentance towards God. Is that right? I'm preaching faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that right? I'm preaching that if any man comes to Christ, his life will become totally new. And the things he used to do, he'll do them no more. And the things he used to drink, he'll drink them no more. And the clothes he used to wear, he'll wear them no more. Peter, that's what I've been preaching. Is that right? The purpose of the